Hi Aquarius Sun and Rising, welcome to your May 2023 Astro Update. It's Raina here. Well, May is yet another jam-packed month like April has been. And May is a month where right off the bat on the 1st, Pluto goes retrograde at 22 minutes of your sign. Because it is not even one degree of Aquarius, it's safe to say that this is still going to be your 12th house. Uh, officially, I think that Pluto is going back into Capricorn, the previous sign around June 11th. So um, that's only weeks away. But uh, in any case, I'm going to speak about it being retrograde in the 12th house. The 12th house is the domain of Pisces and its ruler, Neptune. And so it is all things spiritual, its past lives, its karma, which simply means action, or we could say um, prior actions. And prior actions beget current circumstances. That's why we call it karma. Just like in this lifetime, prior actions become current circumstances. Um, nothing is any different. And um, uh, people want to assign some kind of malevolent um, situation or just a negative situation. No, it's just cause and effect. And, um, and so that's one aspect of it, but it's also the house of self undoing. There's a self-destructive element to the 12th house, you know, looking at it from the more challenging side of the aisle. And um, Pluto retrograde is actually a great time to really bring it back to yourself about why you might be engaging in such behavior. And the reason I say bring it back to yourself is because the Pluto retrograde is going to be about soul searching or psyche searching, um, rather than when Pluto is direct, it can involve, I mean, yeah, Pluto direct can involve shadow work as well, but it also involves looking at other people on a deeper level and, and other things that are going on on a deeper level. And this is really about your own um, actions and complicity and, and, and also, I would say to your motivations, because uh, Pluto can be about psychological issues and uh, the MO or uh, modus operandi, I don't know if it's operandi, yeah, whatever, is really important when we are um, analyzing and trying to change our lives because if we don't know why we're doing what we're doing, then it's very difficult to make better choices because um, we really should understand our motivations. We can have a greater sense of what our needs are. People do things for a reason and that's really important to kind of pinpoint that. So, you may be doing some shadow work around issues surrounding addiction and um, part of the, you know, when we talk about addiction, we're also talking about escapism. And this is one of the things that the 12th house can be about. And sometimes people are in pain and they're looking to escape their pain. So that's what addiction can be about, but it doesn't have to be substance abuse. It can be excessive internet use. And certainly, you know, Aquarius is ruled by Uranus and Uranus can be technology. So um, gadgets and gizmos and all of that good stuff. Um, and Aquarius is a mental sign. So, there can be like kind of escaping from your emotions. Um, I think of the King of Swords in the tarot when I think of Aquarius and being able to get 
into your heart chakra um, instead of that sixth chakra, the, the more of the intellect, fifth or sixth, uh, sixth, <laughs> sixth, sixth chakra is important because it can be too much in your head and not grounded enough in the reality of this 3D world that we're currently uh, inhabiting. Um, but anyway, that is occurring and we, we also have a lot of fixed stuff going on in addition to that. You know, your sign is a fixed sign, but on the fifth of the month, we have a lunar eclipse at 14 degrees of Scorpio. This is the house of career. Now, for some um, Aquarians, if you are of retirement age or even if you're not old enough to retire, but let's say you, well, I mean, I, I'm talking about the United States version, you know, whatever the current age is, I think it's 67 or something like that. Even if you're not 67 and, uh, if you're, if you, you know, have belonged to a union or something and you can, you're, you, you're eligible to get a pension and you really want to leave a job, but you can't bear it because the change that that would bring is too much for you. This could be a time when either that is eclipsed out of your life or you're able to let it go. Now, it's important to note that I see this more it's not just about like when I say eclipsed out of your life, because this is like a powerful full moon, I don't necessarily mean um, it's just not about losing employment. It's about the profession itself. So that could really be what it's about more than actual actually uh, focusing on it being a job. So an example would be, let's say you work in the print media you know, journalism or something like that. And you, you see the writing on the wall that it's kind of like fading and people are, you know, are getting the chopping block left and right, but you kind of have, you know, hung on for whatever reason, maybe you just didn't want to let go, but then it happens anyway. Um, the thing is that, the, the, the lesson of eclipses is to be uh, able to gracefully let go. And people who hold on to things, who can't, who resist change, who, who resist what is, um, you know, meant to be, they're the ones who suffer. The people who almost like celebrated, even if they're scared, about how they're going to, you know, how, how what are the, what are they going to do? Those are the people that will be open, receptive to new opportunities. And really, um, the truth is that there is some kind of, in some cases, I feel like any time that a person um, feels forced to leave a job that when they review it later on, they will see that it wasn't really, um, a growth opportunity for them anymore. And it really was meant to be. And they can see that the changes were for the best, but in that moment, it might feel like a crisis point. But I do feel that for some of you, this may just simply be that you'll feel comfortable walking away from that situation. This could be you getting some kind of massive promotion though. And if you're in anything with the entertainment field where promotion, where um, personal promotion is something that is advantageous, what you know, the ultimate would be fame, but anything where you're getting that recognition that is also featured with this is a 10th house 
is your your place in the world, your stage, the public arena for you. On the seventh, Venus goes into Cancer, and um, this is the sixth house of work. So there is that sense of, um, you know, again, following that lunar eclipse, that can be some kind of money that is coming through your work, maybe a raise. So, um, yeah, so maybe this is going to be more than um, something to do with retiring maybe it's or, or leaving a job maybe it is getting a promotion and getting more money this can also uh, bring some kind of harmony or restore har harmony to the workplace because you've had uh, mars and cancer in this domain in, in april and um and actually at this point mars is still in cancer until the 20th on the 14th, Mercury goes direct at 5 degrees and 51 minutes of Taurus, almost 6 degrees of Taurus. So here again is an angular house. This is for Aquarius, the fourth house of home and family. There might have been some kind of um, miscommunication with your mom or if you, you know, maybe your father I'll just say family of origin, depending on who the fourth house represents for you. Um, this could be a real estate matter. If you've signed any documents or you were planning to, please note that um, the next in the next few weeks, and especially when Mercury comes out of its shadow, um, that will be more um clarified for you but this is i feel like this ushers in a more um how can i put it like like a um forward moving period of time for all of us because mercury now is is direct and this is evidenced by on the 16th Jupiter goes into Taurus. So Jupiter goes into that house as well. Jupiter in the fourth house can mean that there is some kind of luck as it pertains to real estate. Now, I have mentioned that I'm not like a big fan of the word luck anymore, although I do like the idea of luck. But I, um, I feel that sometimes the connotation is something random, and I would prefer alignment and expansion with Jupiter in particular, but alignment instead of luck, meaning that you're in the right place at the right time because of what you're doing, because of the vibe uh, that you are, um, the vibration that you are on. If it's at a higher level, I think that you attract better circumstances. And so, you know, everything you do can be at a higher level, like upgraded. So Jupiter um, can mean a bigger residence. It can mean that you are more free. Maybe for some people, this is going to be that you're going to travel and, you know, Airbnbs will be your home. Actually, I do believe that this is going, that that is true for some people because Jupiter represents the ninth or, you know, rules the ninth house, which can be in part long distance travel. And you already have Uranus in this uh, fourth house, which can be like a lot of uh, changes, maybe, you know, unpredictable housing situations and Aquarius that your ruler is Uranus. So that isn't necessarily something that would be, uh, distasteful to you. You might want that kind of a lifestyle, at least for some part of your life. And Jupiter may provide that for you. 
on the 19th, but your your household could expand as well. On the 19th, there's a new moon here at 28 degrees of Taurus. And I always like think of those late degrees of a sign as almost being like a full moon instead of a new moon. But what I mean by that is that even though there are new developments, it's also maybe the harvest where something is um, coming into fruition that is new for you. And new, whereas, you know, with new moons, you usually think about planting seeds, but that's for future um, crops. And this might be that they're manifesting very quickly because, it, you know, you have this late degree a new moon um and it's like it's a long time coming this thing that you've wanted that is connected to real estate on the 20th and also by the way jupiter can be getting some kind of maybe even monetary um assistance blessings from housing matters, but also from your parents. On the 20th, Mars goes into Leo. This is your opposite sign. Now, the opposite house, the seventh house, is the house of committed partnership. But it's also the house of legal affairs. So, you know, when I talk about committed partnership, sometimes that's a legal relationship like a marriage. Sometimes marriages last, sometimes they don't. And when they don't, we call it divorce. And when people get divorced, they usually have to uh, bring in a lawyer. Um, or maybe they always do. I don't know. I've never been divorced. I've never been married either. So <laughs> there you go. If you are in a good relationship that is, um, you know, a solid relationship, Maybe you have um, been working um, long and hard and you haven't really had time to spend with your partner and Mars could indicate more activities with your partner. This could even be working out with your partner. I see like a physicality with Mars. On the 21st, the sun goes into Gemini and this is a fellow air sign it's the fifth house so i mean <laughs> if there are some of you aquarians who are um you know talking to someone as the kids call it you know somebody that you're attracted to this could be indicative of that now remember that mars went through the sign of gemini for seven months some married or coupled Aquarians might have been having a torrid affair. And that has led to deciding to get divorced, hence Mars in the seventh house. And then now maybe you're going to be with the person that you really want to be with. This is just a great time to have fun when you have plants in the in the fifth house, especially personal planets. So uh, this is the house of pleasure, the ho house of creativity. Um, children are connected to the fifth house and actually in conceiving children, uh, Jupiter in the fourth house, expansion of the household. So it, does that mean that some uh, Aquarians are going to get pregnant or get someone pregnant. I don't know. But um, anyway, that's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated, Aquarius. If you would like a private reading, I'm promoting my double readings that are a special value for the package deal, two full-length readings, an hour of natal chart interpretation, an hour of uh, transits for the next 12 months called my deep dive reading. I have one with the tarot as well called the whole enchilada. And I have standalone readings, including love readings for those people who are <laughs> experiencing Mars in the, in the seventh in a challenging way. You can find out more information at the link below. I'm at rainandmoonastrology.com. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye.